Dear colleagues, I am presenting the preliminary results of a study from Hamburg, Germany, where we examined glaucoma patients under the medication of Tafluprost um, using OCT angiography. These are my disclosures. Open angle glaucoma is characterized by a progressive loss of retinal nerve fiber layer, eventually leading to visual field defects and eventually blindness. Glaucoma is thereby still one of the main causes for blindness worldwide, and while many pathogenetic mechanisms have been proposed, it's still pretty unclear what glaucoma is. In the, early, in the 60s, a German resident conducted a study investigating the intraocular pressure in glaucoma, or at least in patients with and without visual field defects. And he found that patients with visual field, uh, visual field defect are, did have higher intraocular pressure. So we try to treat this on intraocular pressure because we know that it's the main reason for the development of glaucoma and its progression. We have surgery and our known glaucoma eye drops which lead to an decreased intraocular pressure. The question is, is this reduction in intraocular pressure enough? We all know those patients who have a really good controlled intraocular pressure below 9 or 10, and still from visit to visit the visual field defects are progressing. So it seems that the reduction of intraocular pressure can't be enough. And in this personal experience is backed up by major glaucoma trials like the ocular hypertension treatment study. So there has to be something more. And a lot of researchers looked at the ocular blood flow. There are countless techniques to measure at least parts of the ocular blood flow or features of the ocular blood flow, and they all showed a similar image, that the blood flow in glaucoma in some way is reduced. So the main question is, how could we increase ocular blood flow in glaucoma? I mean, we currently do not know whether this will change the course of the disease, but at least we know it, it's reduced and we could look at ways how to increase this pressure. So we looked at the available glaucoma eye drops. Maybe one of them is able to increase the blood flow. And literature showed that um, tafluprost may be a viable candidate, as it showed in early experiments, in animal experiments, that the blood velocity is increased under its therapy. In our study, we included glaucoma patients under the treatment of tafluprost and compared it to untreated glaucoma patients. Those untreated glaucoma patients had received surgery and did not need um, treatment at that moment. All patients um, had no significant differences concerning the intraocular pressure or visual field defects. The patients received OCT angiography with the Triton, and we chose from the OCT angiography scan the nerve head compromising the upper retinal limits and its respective flow. We took this image to MATLAB, um, binary-sized it, and put an ETDRS circle on it and measured the flow density inside the different sectors as pixel density. As an example, this patient had a central flow density of 30%, superiorly 20%, nicely 14%, inferiorly 33% and temporal 16%. We did this for all patients. These are the results for the untreated glaucoma patients. In comparison, the Tafluprost patients in white boxes in mean all had an increased flow density. However, only the temporal sector was significantly increased. The temporal sector is somehow special as it is, represents the papillomacular bundle and is affected at last in glaucoma, so it's the most stable sector. Um, the reason why the superior and inferior sector might not be significantly increased might be due to the small sample size 
owe to the fact that we did not match for um, the location of the visual field defects. And we all know that the visual field defect is correlated to the flow density in OCD and, and angiography. So in summary, Tafloprost, besides lowering the intraocular pressure, might increase the flow density in glaucoma patients. Thank you.